The governor's candidates were at the polls this morning. Tudor Dixon cast her vote in Norton Shores. Garrett Saldano went to the polls this morning in Madawan. We caught up with him there and also saw Kevin Rinke cast his vote this morning in Oakland County. In the closely watched 3rd Congressional District, incumbent Peter Meyer went to the polls this morning in Grand Rapids. His Republican challenger, John Gibbs, also going to the polls this morning in Byron Center. We have Brittany Flowers here in the studio. She was at the polls throughout the morning. Uh, was it busy where you were, Brittany? Not too busy, but there were several people. We were in Zealand this morning. There were several people who were in line before the polls even opened. They were really eager to cast their ballot. So if you're still considering whether you should head out to the polls, the message from clerks across West Michigan is a resounding yes. Ottawa County Clerk Justin Roebuck says all election matter, all elections matter, but in particular, these local elections determine things that directly affect your community. Primary elections in many parts of the state that are heavily Republican or heavily Democrat often decide who may be the candidate going forward. We spoke with one voter who was out here just minutes after the polls opened about why he feels it's so important to exercise this right. If you're going to vote in the general election, you want the best options available. Um, in the primaries, uh, like you're making sure you choose the best candidates that you want to see uh, in the general election. And a lot of people complain about the options. Well, if you're going to complain about who you're voting in general election, show up in the primaries. Coming up in our next half hour, you'll hear from the Ottawa County Clerk about what things he wants people to keep in mind if they do plan on heading to the polls today. In studio, Brittany Flowers, News 8. Well, Michigan is a key state for Republicans and Democrats in the midterm. We have Chuck Todd on with us now, moderator of Meet the Press in Washington. Thanks for joining us, Chuck. So, Happy to do so. I want to talk a little bit about all of these endorsements that former President Donald Trump is giving out, including uh, in the last several days for Tudor Dixon, one of the Republican candidates here for governor. What right. impact do you think all of these endorsements will have? Well, it all depends. You know, sir, a Trump endorsement uh, is sometimes very much campaign uh, dependent, meaning there's some campaigns that are built all of you know, sort of built entirely around having Trump support. In the race, in the Republican primary challenge to Peter Meyer in the congressional race, for instance, Sean Gibbs, you know, he, he wouldn't have a candidacy without having the Trump apparatus, the Trump endorsement. So for him, it's a hugely, you know, there'd be no relevant campaign without it. Tudor Dixon, arguably, was on her way to winning this with or without the Trump endorsement. And I say this because he kind of weighed in so late. You had sort of others in the primary also trying to run in it. And there isn't anybody running away from Trump, per se, in the primary. So, look, do I think it helps better to have it than not uh, if you're Tudor Dixon? Let's talk about that Peter Meyer, John Gibbs race as well. As you mentioned, Gibbs, mm -hmm. the reason he's in the race is because of his support from Trump. Um, what does that do with cases right. like this around the country where you have a more moderate Republican going up against someone like this and you even have Democratic groups uh, adding money to campaigns yeah. or adding you know, advertising to kind of support that Trump candidate, hoping that that's who the Democrat will go up against in November? You know, it's interesting here, of all the 10 impeachers, Peter Meyer was the only one who voted to impeach from a swing district, arguably, right? All of the other ones were from districts that weren't, were not nearly as competitive as, as this Grand Rapids-based district is. It's been sort of, it had been a lean Republican district for a long time and then become a bit more swing as Grand Rapids has grown, a bit more diverse, and we've seen that become more competitive. So this is in some ways a unique test case, right, where you had an impeacher from a swing district and we're seeing what's gonna happen here in this primary. Look, I think Democrats believe that if if the Trump endorsed candidate gets nominated, that'll be considered too far out of the mainstream for that, that swing vote within Grand Rapids and in this district. Thank you so much for your time and joining us uh, from Meet the Press. We appreciate it. We do have crews across the state tracking the polls and the candidates. Our live team coverage will start on News 8 at 5, then look for a special report at 8 on WXSP and WoodTV.com with continuing coverage at 11 on WoodTV.